What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is August 8th and Bitcoin is actually getting support right where it needs to, the upward sloping trend line. And there are a couple reasons for this that could be related to news. Yesterday, PayPal announced that they are unveiling their new stablecoin, PayPal USD. BlackRock Insider says that a spot Bitcoin ETF approval could be expected in the next four to six months. Also check this out. This is interesting. The Federal Reserve creates an oversight program for Bitcoin. If this doesn't scream Bitcoin ETF, I don't know what does. The Federal Reserve is getting ready for Bitcoin to really come on the scene. Yesterday, I did the Bitcoin Fed balance sheet comparison and we went through this whole chart. And today on Twitter, I also released this chart. This is the Bitcoin S&P weekly comparison. And also we're gonna go over the seasonality because we're in August right now, but we're coming up on the worst month for Bitcoin historically. All of this and more in today's video. <laughs> Today, Bitcoin is seeing a bounce off the trend line. This is a pretty significant point to hold the trend as it is the trend line that stems back to the very beginning of this year. Today's move is likely coming off of the positive sentiment that's being generated by PayPal stablecoin announcement and by the BlackRock ETF apparently being four to six months away. Yesterday, I featured this chart that I made Bitcoin Fed balance sheet comparison. Today, I made this, which is the second edition, showing the more recent events. Now, I don't wanna go over everything in here. I just wanna mention a few things as the video goes on. The Fed balance sheet hitting the lowest level since August of 2021. But what's been very clear to me and something that we predicted on this channel at the very start of the year, we talked about how the markets are likely gonna push up into 2023 because of the expectation of rates pausing. We see interest rates are moving up at a high velocity, but the inflation rate is coming down. And because the inflation rate is coming down, smart money saw the inflation rate coming down and began to put in support at the bottom of this market. We saw the S&P turn around and Bitcoin turn around as the smart money dove in at the bottom of the market where everyone was bearish, right? But smart money saw that change in the inflation rate and stepped in. And now everyone is of course following the bandwagon getting really, really bullish, which I find a little bit worrisome because once again, the Fed balance sheet is coming down. S&P 500 right now, which we've been discussing on this channel, daily RSI breakdown, the fact that it's reset and that could allow for another uh, bounce to the upside, maybe even another higher high on this run before maybe pulling back later. And if that does happen, Bitcoin could be moving up. I wanna talk about that in a second. First of all, it's important to mention first that Bitcoin and the S&P do have a strong correlation. And I know a lot of people don't like to think about this. They just wanna be blind to it and say, no, 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 they don't wanna believe it. But guys, I mean, just look at this chart. I made this chart today, I posted on Twitter. It's from the end of 2021 to where we are today the bear market essentially, and the current recovery. Just about every single support zone and resistance zone lines up to a T between the S&P and Bitcoin. This is the S&P, this is Bitcoin. There are times when the correlation seems to be more or less relevant, depending on what tool you're using to measure the correlation. But what's pretty clear is that all the major turning points are pretty much lining up support resistance. Now there are anomalies. And like I was saying before, news driven anomalies, like Bitcoin has PayPal and BlackRock news today. The S&P has actually negative news with the downgrade of the banks. They are almost always generally correlated unless you have devastating fundamental news like FTX or the reverse, like right here, the S&P is falling and we had a bank run here in 2023. As people saw the valuable use case for Bitcoin during that time. Bitcoin's ripping to the upside, S&P's dumping. And then you move on, you see Bitcoin here is not really seeing higher highs. We're actually going sideways. There's no major breakout here yet. And the S&P is seeing major moves up. Generally good earnings reports and people speculating on a Fed pause because the inflation rate is coming down. There's a lot of positive sentiment behind all of that. Whereas crypto is sitting there at war with the SEC. So we don't get that higher high in price. We go sideways. And that's why it is very important, in my opinion, to be watching the S&P 500. It is relevant. They're just interplaying the entire time. Now, we're looking at the S&P. And today, the S&P is 
currently on the daily chart bouncing back a little bit. If you see here, we hit a low, we actually hit our lowest low and now we're bouncing up. There is a falling wedge, which in classic TA is actually a bullish pattern, right? If we reject this, then we'll probably reach even lower. But if we break out, you could expect a punch up possibly to new highs. The S&P on the daily, these RSI breakdowns are no joke. They are no joke. Bring up Bitcoin into comparison, because once again, all of these major RSI breakdowns for the S&P are doing what? They are also affecting Bitcoin along the way. So it's important to look at the S&P is now actually what, what seems to be getting like a reset on the daily RSI. We had our breakdown. We talked about it on this channel. We got the breakdown. That was a bearish signal. We continued down for a bit. But now we are at the 50 level, getting support along the 50 level, which sometimes can be the area of support. Looking at the RSI breaking down here, it comes down near the 50 level. And what do we get? We get a retest up to the RSI trend line. And that is a higher high on price, lower levels of relative strength, bearish divergence comes down again. It's possible that maybe we're looking for the next bounce up. RSI comes up to retest that trend line before coming down. And then we see lower levels of relative strength on a slightly higher high. And that could be the formation of a local top. Could mean that Bitcoin breaks the 100 week SMA. And that could be an area of high volume. It is an area of interest. It is something that was, it was a major breakdown level for the bear market here when we got below that huge move down. Of course, it all depends on how things play. But if we do get this move, right? It could be a support zone on a pullback before moving into the halving, something along these lines. This is the bullish case right now, in my opinion, something along those lines. We hit the FIB targets and then retest the 100. And basically we pull back below 30,000 again before the halving. The most realistic bullish case, right? I mean, obviously the most bullish case is we just go like this or the most bearish case that we just go like this, right? I'm saying a realistic bullish case is something along these lines. And before we continue this analysis, I wanna bring something to the table. All you guys that are still watching the video, cause you're my loyal viewers, you gotta consider taking this offer right here. This is Patreon at $19 a month, 70% down. It's a bear market discount. As the bull market comes in, as we go to the halving, the prices go up. So this is the lowest it's ever going to be. And you gotta jump on it now. There's limited slots, limited time. And as the bull market comes, we do altcoin picks. We have the Discord. So you can lock it in for a lifetime right now. Take it while it's here. A realistic bullish case is something along these lines. You see there's volatility, but no significant change. Bitcoin loves to do that. I mean, look at all of 2021. It was just no significant change of price, highly volatile. That's the kind of stuff you should expect. Now here's a conflicting thing is that uh, historically, September is the most bearish month. September since 2013, September has had two out of 10 months showing any positive return at, at all. So September is largely really bad for market. Stock market, it's one of the worst months in stock market history. In Bitcoin history, September is just terrible. So we're in August right now and September. And so this scenario is, you know, not really accounting for the seasonality. We shouldn't be going up here. This is saying that we would initiate a move up in September. So I think we're in for a very interesting moment coming up in the next few months because we're likely gonna get a rate hike pause and the market's gonna be interpreting that in a certain way. Now the market has already preemptively been going up for the pause, this is anticipation. Again, inflation rates coming down, smart money bought up the market in anticipation for the pause. Now we're going into the pause and then potentially in the next few months. The tightening cycle is expected to end when the Fed gets down to 7.5 trillion, which is all the way down here. That is at least what analysts are saying, which means the tightening is gonna be coming down into 2024. So we're gonna be tightening into 2024 with a rate hike pause. And then the question is, how long is the Fed gonna leave rates at higher levels? Well, that's gonna be up to the inflation and how that is playing. So seeing a blow off top into a pause is quite possible, but with the continued tightening, I don't see it sustaining. Right, and that's why I was just talking about this scenario, where if it's a bullish pause scenario, up into the pause, tightening continues, 
and then somewhere into 2024, the Fed will end the QT cycle, possibly even start moving rates down if inflation is under control, and that would be great timing for the 2024 halving. And it's possible that we don't get this scenario because maybe the S&P has an RSI rebound up to this resistance, right? The previous support is new resistance before coming back down and playing up a real correction. And if that is the case, we would be actually going down into September. We would get a slightly higher high, get the bearish divergence, and then dump in September and have a horrible month. And if that is the case, we might be seeing something a little different here, playing out a little bit of a fake out. Maybe we get a slightly higher high, fake out, dump. So what I'm really doing in this video is discussing all of the potential scenarios, all of the probabilities, but it's very difficult to give a simple answer right now. Right now, there's a lot of factors at play and a lot of conflicting things like positive Bitcoin news, positive fundamental news, tightening cycle, rates rising, going into a pause. I mean, it's just a lot. It's just a lot of stuff. Before we end this video, I gotta let you guys know that Patreon is currently at a record low discount. This is a bear market discount that is still here. In the not so distant future, this discount will not be here. This is like the cheapest it's been in a very long time, $19 a month. And if you get in at this price, you can lock it in forever, which meaning in the bull market, when the prices are going up 50, $60 a month, because we do that to keep the, the number of people's down because it gets too crazy in the Discord. You guys can lock this in and have this for as long as you want. And also the, the yearly 16% discount changes the price to $15 or $16. So it's really, really cheap historically. So if you get in now, you can lock it in forever at this low price. It will be going up. We do altcoin picks. We have a VIP Discord chat where we all communicate. And this is gonna be a limited thing, guys. This will not be something that everyone gets. Limited time and limited slots. So take it while it's here. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the like. We discussed a ton of things today. And if you guys like this kind of content, smash the like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.